Anyone who spent any time around electronics and manufacturing will no doubt recognize what this is. It's a pick and place machine. It's a cheap Chinese pick and place machine to be specific. I've seen a lot of videos on uh, YouTube relating to these and the difficulties people have in setting them up, um, getting them to work properly. So I thought it was worthwhile making a, a few videos on how to get the best out of these. I picked this up because I do quite a lot of PCB assembly at home. Uh, I run a business where I manufacture electronics and of course we don't use this in that business. Um, but the principle is the same for these as it is for the larger machines. They're just a lot cheaper and in some ways a lot more fiddly to set up. But they are very capable and they're well worth investing in if um, you intend to make more than just a few surface mount boards. Perhaps a little bit beyond the reach of the average hobbyist but certainly worth considering if, uh, as I say, you, you tend to assemble more than uh, a few boards at a time. I won't try and cram everything into one video. I just want to give you a quick overview on this video as to uh, which machine this is and show you it running. Uh, and then over the next few videos I'll look at specific parts of the process from how to get the files out of your PCB CAD system uh, into a format this machine, or more specifically the software for this machine, can use. And that's not nearly as difficult as it may appear. Uh, and then I'll go through the, the setup, um, configuration, how to load the components, and how to set up the boards, how to set up the heads, and just basically how to get the best out of it. As I say, it's a very capable machine. Now this normally sits somewhere else. I uh, brought it into this room because the workshop it normally sits in is, is way too noisy to make videos in. The only thing is the bench this is on is not suitable for this purpose. It rattles about and moves around and if you do get one of these, first tip, it has to go onto a sturdy bench. I've reduced the speed of this down to about 30% of its normal uh, full speed but even so you'll see it, it rocks about quite a lot. That's not a fault with the machine, it's just this bench is not suitable for this um, purpose. So before I say anything else, I'll show you it uh, running. We'll just place one of the boards on this pallet. Um, it'll only take a few seconds, you'll see what the machine does. I've set this particular job up to use both of the two heads on the machine, so it will pick two components at once. Um, it's set to inspect them with the up-facing camera. Uh, there are three components in total, two types of resistor and a um, SLT23 component. And it will place those, I'll stop it after the first um, board on the pallet's done. Now to stop the components bouncing everywhere and just moving around once they've been placed, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I've put some double-sided tape onto the board it's um, far easier to do that, to do initial testing, than using solder paste. Firstly because it's a lot cheaper than solder paste, but also if um, you want to run the board several times, you can just pick the components off and then run it again without having to do much cleanup besides that. Okay, so I'll get it running. Um, ignore what I'm doing on here for now. I'll go over this in more detail another time. So I've got a job in here that I will load, which is for this board, and then we'll start it running. Okay, so it's um, finished the first board. I'll just get the get out of the way so we can see it. And it's as quick as that. Um, I'll take some close up photos uh, under the microscope to uh, give you a better view of that. 
but as you can see it works well uh, even picking two components at the same time reverse things you might need to modify in the machine before you can get it to run reliably there's a lot of things I still need to do on this machine that need uh, tidying up to uh, improve it still further but it's a very capable machine and as I said it's well worth the investment now one thing I would say is that I've seen a lot of comments online about how little support there is from the manufacturers of this machine and I can fully appreciate why that is as a manufacturer myself uh, one of the things I focus on is manufacturing I'm not there to hold the hand of the people that buy the machines off me and the same is true of the people that build this but to a much higher degree um, the people putting these things together are selling them for uh, almost nothing that they sell them for pretty much what the labor cost would be in the UK just to put these things together not including the materials they cannot afford to spend hours or days holding the hand of anyone that wants to buy one of these and they're selling you a machine and they expect you to do the homework to learn how to use it um, having said that I thought I'd put these videos together just to, to help out a little bit if someone's struggling to get them up and running um, but just Bear in mind the manufacturer can't afford to help you too much, uh, their hands are tied and it's not really fair to beat up on them because they must focus on what they do. Uh, okay so just a very quick look at the machine, it will handle boards up to about um, 350 millimeters square, it's got uh, 29 reel holders. Now one of the main things that anyone's going to notice if they are familiar with the bigger, more expensive machines is this is where this machine varies most in terms of uh, practicality and usage compared to an, an industrial or commercial machine. In the commercial machine what you have are essentially cassettes that you load the reels into and then you slot the cassette into the pick and place machine and if you want to change a component in any one of the stations you pull its cassette out and put in the new cassette that has the uh, component that you want in that station uh, naturally you can't do that with this machine you have to manually feed in each reel by hand if it's a component that you want to change that's in the middle um, then you're out of luck you're going to have a bit of a, uh, a struggle trying to get that uh, component changed Having said that, you don't need to place them like this, you can space them out, so it's up to you entirely as to which station you put which components in, and they don't need to be consecutively numbered. Um, there are advantages to having them close together, which I'll go over in another video, um, but as I said, that's the main difference between this and a commercial industrial machine. It just takes longer to set it up, uh, it takes longer to change jobs, but if you're using it for small production batches, um, or many boards with the same components then that's not a problem at all you just uh, load up with the most commonly used components in whichever station you have free and um, you're good to go you can also put um, trays of components in you can put loose components in here you just tell the machine uh, where the components are that you want to load and, uh, and you're away this has two cameras it has a down facing camera and again we'll look at that in another video and it has an up facing camera uh, the down facing camera is used to identify the various uh, features on the machine so it can find things it gives you very good uh, alignment capability so you can line this, uh, align this machine to very close tolerances the up facing camera is to examine components uh, so as it picks each component it actually looks at it makes sure it's the right way around um, optionally make sure it's the right size so again we'll look at all that in the uh, coming videos uh, there are certain aspects of this that you need to cater for when you create the files that the software runs um, but essentially that's it as I said it's, it's, it's a nice machine it does the job it's fairly fast uh, it'll run up to about 2,000 components an hour um, which are small runs uh, is very good so uh, we'll lay this complete pallet and 20 boards out in about seven minutes which is obviously a, a huge time saver and it's just uh, four or five minutes in the reflow oven and the entire pallet 
So, okay, that's it for this video. I'll come back with some more information. If there's anything in particular you want me to address, any uh, particular points on the machine that you want me to go over, then please drop me a, a comment and I'll make a specific video for that. Um, but otherwise, I'll just go through each, um, each point step by step. We'll start with getting the, um, the files from your PC CAD software into the format that this software uses and then look at setting up the machine for the run and um, getting the components in there and getting the best out of it.